So this is our last lesson of the unit. And really, I don't think it's a necessary lesson, but it is just something good to review. We have done word problems for equations all throughout this unit. They always appear. Um, but today we're focusing specifically on systems of equations. So table four, can you tell me how many equations are in a system? Sorry, one more time. Two. So if I'm telling you on your test, which if you look at your practice test that you just picked up, um, it says create a system of equations to represent the situation. Um, a system of equations, at least for this unit, will have two equations. It can have more, but it needs to have at least two. And then again, I'm telling you for this unit, if it says make a system of equations, you should have two separate equations. Here are some steps. I kind of go by a different set of steps. So what I usually tell you to look for first when you have to make an equation is to look for what? The total. Identify a total of some sort. Because totals are where usually in an equation? Alone on one side of the equal sign. To me, that is easier to start off with. So first step would be to identify totals and put alone on one side of each sign, or put alone next to each sign. Right, so like when I'm reading number one, which number one is pretty easy, usually they'll be easier, but it'll be nice to start with like an easier one. Um, so it says the sum of two numbers is 30 and their difference is 12, find the two number. So table five, what is one of my totals in number one? 30. 30 is one of them. And table six, what's my other total? Mm -hmm. That one's kind of easy. There wasn't much numbers to like decipher between, but if it's not a real world situation, it probably is next to the word is, is tells you to put an equal sign and then put it alone on one side. The other side of the equal sign should be what contributes to that total. I don't know how to summarize that in a step, but um, I would put, think of what contributes to each total. So if it's like how much someone spent on groceries, there's usually some dollar amounts in there. There's usually some numbers of items in there. Um, and use your critical thinking skills when you go buy groceries. What math does it do when you're buying like certain amounts of certain things? Uh, things like that. It could be numbers, it could be variables, it's probably both. And since we're talking about systems of equations, you need to be using the same variables in each equation. So like in this first one, think of what contributes to the 30. Table seven, how can I write the sum of two numbers on the other side of that equal sign? <clears throat> Do I know what the two numbers are? Am I allowed to just pick two random numbers? Okay, so how do we label unknowns in math? So this could be maybe a step three. Unknowns or things that can vary, but I'm just gonna put unknowns because usually you're solving for something. Unknowns are labeled with variables. And then you can probably continue with the rest of it. Define your variables, write the system, solve it, answer it. But this is how to make your system. Identify your totals. Think of what contributes to that total. If you don't know something, it's probably a variable. Um, table eight, 
What does the word sum tell us to do? So I'm going to add the two numbers, which I don't know what two numbers. So we're going to use variables. Class, what variables do you want me to use? And I think those are good ones to use. Because especially if you're going to solve it like with Genpose, you want your variables to be X and Y if it's going to read it. But yeah, it didn't, it didn't say that it's the same number added to itself. So I want to use two different variables. Questions on that? Okay. So then table one, read the sentence of what contributes to the 12. So it says their difference is 12. How do I write that next to the equal sign? Okay, anything else? Okay, X minus Y. So the sum of two numbers is 30 and their difference is 12. Difference means subtract. Whatever order I put these two numbers in, I need to keep that order. Order does matter in. Can't just make it Y minus X. But any questions on that? So the skill we're practicing today is making the system. If you look again on your practice test that you picked up right now, the very first one says create a system to model the situation, to find the variables in use. So what are we saying X represents? Don't overthink it. Uh, for, for, all right, so if I have to define my variables and that's points on the test, I need to write out X represents or X equals my first number. What does Y represent? My second number. This is me defining my variables. In part B on your practice test, it says to solve by graphing. So for your practice test and your real test, probably, that's what I'm going to play after, you have to solve it with the method they say. If you have no clue how to do that method, then I guess try another one. At least we'll get some of the points, but you won't get full points. On this paper, it doesn't say you have to use a certain method. So it's up to you. What method do you guys think would be easiest to solve this system. Then three of them. That's B. Okay, elimination. Do you guys think elimination is an easy one for this? I would agree. Um, really probably typing it in Desmos and seeing where they intersect is probably like the least amount of skill. But it just depends on what it's asking for. Um, we should practice eliminating though, no, so let's do that. Um, table three, would adding or subtracting eliminate one of the variables? Okay, adding eliminates one of the variables. Which one does it eliminate? It eliminates the Y, right? Because they have opposite sign. It definitely doesn't eliminate the X, right? Because the X's have the same sign. It's up to you which one you want to eliminate. Um, I'm. If you guys want to add them together, then you must be wanting to eliminate the Y. Because I have to eliminate, I have to add to eliminate there, I need to add everywhere else. So class, what's X plus X? <laughs> Qx and what is 30 plus 12? 42. And we're solving for our first number. So what is opposite of multiplying by two? And whatever you do on one side. And my first number is 21. Now we're not done because we still need to identify the second number, which this one, like we said, is pretty easy. 
but how would I ordinarily find my second number? Asking all of you, how would I ordinarily find my second number? Plug in the X into one of the original equations. Does it matter which one? Table four, which one do you think would be easiest to plug into? Okay, I agree. And I'm sure you can guess and check what plus 21 gives me 30, but we teach you how to use your inverse operation so that if you don't know how to where to go from here, um, you can figure it out. So table five, how do I cancel out that 21? Subtract 21 and whatever you do on one side of the each side. And class, what does y end up equaling? And doesn't that make sense? Don't they add to give me 30 and their difference is 12? Isn't that true? So good. Um, now that one was kind of a bit more of a warm up. We're going to try some more pinky examples, which is more what you'll see on your test. Um, but briefly, let's just review the learning targets now that we've done one. So I mentioned this is our last lesson of unit two and really unit two is split into two parts. So this is our last one of this part before you take your unit tests. Um, today, we are applying systems of equations to the real world and focusing on making those system of equations from a real world situation. The, way, the method of solving it is up to you. We learned three different ones last week. But like I said, if you are taking a time test and it doesn't have you solving it a certain way, what way is probably the fastest? You can solve it whatever way you want, but what way is probably the most accurate and the fastest? <laughs> probably does. But if it's like your practice test and it says you need to solve it by graphing and you don't, then you lose points. Okay, so just whatever it says. It doesn't say to solve it a certain way. If it just wants the final answer, you can do that. But you do have to know the other methods because not all of the questions want the final answer. Some of them want the next step and things like that. Um, so especially comparing it to that practice test you picked up today, you need to be able to read the instructions. If it says relate your answer back to the real world situation, you need to be able to do that. Now I record every day as you can see, it will all be linked in there. So should you ever need to go back and maybe take some notes down for lessons that you either lost or missed, you should do that tonight. Because tomorrow is the binder check. I'm gonna skip this slide for a second. And here's everything that's included in it. Some of these numbers I might have to adjust because we didn't necessarily do both pages on some of them, but whatever we did in class, which you can see from the video, is what I'm going to do. So that is in Schoology, you can organize it tonight. Make sure you have everything. I don't really care that it's in order. Just make sure you have it. And then these two things are not included in the binder check, but I will check them tomorrow. So that's the practice test that you just picked up. That's the one that's 50 points and you can upload it, but I'm gonna check it once in class. And then you have this other practice for today's lesson that I can also check tomorrow, or you can just upload it. Um, this one says evens or odds, as you can see at the top. But I know some of you have a lot to take care of because maybe you fall into behind. Remember that the study guides at this point should probably take a higher priority. One of the papers you picked up today is one of the study guides. And then you have some extra credit opportunities. So here's all the things that can help you do well on this next test and just overall. All right, these two are mandatory. 
This one's optional. It says fill in the title. And the IXL skills are also optional. And we will submit them for extra points for LinkedIn. So questions on that? Okay. Um, so this also, I'm not going to read every single one. But if it were me and I were trying to tackle like the more higher priority things, then I would do it in this order. Things that are worth the most amount of points and that will help me prepare for the test the most. That is in school of All right, here's our plan for the week as far as assessments and deadlines. Any questions? So I know like I make it a priority to do the three day test cycle where you just take it for the first time, you do an activity with it the next day, and then the day after you retake it. So that way we can really just keep it moving and moving forward. I mentioned before we have five units this semester. So it really is gonna come by fast. You don't wanna be focusing on past units we're just going to continue to move on. So make sure your first attempt is the good one. And that way the retake is just extra for you so you can move on. All right. Questions on anything I said? All right. Let's look at one of these more beefy examples, if you will. Probably more like what will actually be on your test. Let's look at number six. So when you are making your system of equations, table seven, what do I tell you to identify first? A total of some sort. So let's read it. The sum of two numbers is 25. One number is twice the second number plus seven. What are the two numbers? So table eight, what's one of the totals in that description? So 25 should be alone on one side of the each side. And since we're dealing with the system, table nine, how many equations should I have? Two. So that means I have another total. Table nine, what's the other total? So. Sure. Does it say is seven? So what is our total in this one? One of the variables. So it says one number is, and we don't know what that one number is. Ask how do we label unknowns? Variable. With variables. So what do we want maybe the first number to be? What variable? Okay, I heard why, that's up to you. So then what do we want the second number to be? Okay. However you define it, you just have to keep it consistent. So if we want one of the numbers to be alone on one side, if you read it, we don't want the second number to be alone on one side because it says one number is twice the second number. So class one needs to go here, X or Y. The way that we labeled it, it has to be Y. Because which, which variable do we pick for the second number? So that's not the part that's alone on one side. The phrase is means equals. So the one number is twice the second number. So that implies what's alone on one side is the first. I know, but you just have to like read it. Now think what contributes to that total. So table one, what contributes to the 25? How do I write it with numbers and symbols? So what contributes to the 25 total? We read it, find where it says 25, and see what contributes to that 25. So how do I translate the sum of two numbers? Good. 
I'm just going to write it as y plus x because that's what you guys told me. For the first number to be y, the second number to be x. But yes, we're adding some means to add. Now, table two, translate this one. So the one number is, and everything that follows, how do I translate that to this? All right, so class, evaluate that. Does this mean twice the second number plus seven? All right, good. Does twice mean multiply by two plus seven? I mean, literally plus seven. So good. And whatever we define the variables as, we have to keep it consistent. Now it's just a matter of solving. This is the skill I'm really focusing on is you making it. Now it's a matter of solving. Um, table three, what method would you like for solving this system? Of the three we learned. <laughs> So elimination, substitution, graphing, based on how this looks, which one do you think would be best? Can you repeat it for a third time? Okay, how should I solve this one? of the three methods we learned last week. Okay, guys, this is an option. Okay, why not elimination in this one? Okay, so I would not recommend elimination in this one because they're not in the same format, right? We have one with a variable alone on one side and one that doesn't, right? They're just not in the same format. If we want it to be elimination, we probably want them to both be in standard form, like that, where they're lined up and we can just add or subtract them. Um, as much as I'd love to do it a substitution example, I do think that's a good method since one of the variables is already alone. For time purposes, we're going to do this graphing in Desmos, okay? But yeah, substitution would be better than elimination in this one. And I don't have a coordinate plane printed on my paper, so that's why I'm doing it in Desmos. All right, so I wrote down exactly what we wrote. Because I use X's and Y's, it should graph nicely. And it says that my answers are these. Now, keep in mind, you guys did the first number and then the second number. Let me see if it would change if I did the other way. Okay, so yeah, depending on what you picked, that might like switch up your order. Um, so if I did it a different way, if I wrote my system a different way, then I would say that my first number is 19 and my second number is uh, six. But the way that you guys wrote it, you had the Y as your first number. So the Y is six. And the X is 19. I know traditionally we do X and then Y, but you guys kind of put these variables in a funky order. Up to you. I think moving forward, do X as the first number and Y as the second so that you don't run into this situation. All right, questions, comments, concerns? Okay, so that is 
like one of the ones you'll see on your tests where they're more math wordy on your constructed response, you have more of a real world situation. So let's do number seven. I'm gonna make that one of you try. Create the system based off this situation. The cost of three boxes of envelopes and four boxes of notebook paper is 13.25. Two boxes of envelopes and six boxes of notebook paper cost $17. So table six, what is one of the totals in the situation? Okay, good. Table seven, what's the other total? 13.25. If you were thinking three, four, six, or two as a total, you want to look for, I don't know, like a total cost, the total amount they bought, like something around those lines, not just what could contribute to it. Okay. Then that should help make what contributes to the 17. See the words that are around it and leading up to it. That was two boxes of envelopes and six boxes of notebook paper cost $17. Table eight, how can I translate that into numbers, variables, symbols? Okay, so we're saying it for the other total. So I'm gonna match it up with that total. All right, so that wasn't the one I wanted yet, but he did say equals 13.25, so it should go with that total. Um, table nine, what contributes to the total of 17? Wait, I just heard six. So what contributes to the 17? How can I write that in numbers, variables? Translate the two boxes of envelopes and six boxes of notebook paper cost $17. Sorry, one more time, Amy. 2x plus 6y. Class, what is x representing in this one? The cost of boxes of envelopes. Sorry, my words are kind of going all together, but yes. We know how many they bought, we just don't know the cost. And these over here are dollar amounts, usually on the other side should be dollar amounts, but this time I don't know what they are. That's why they're unknown, they're the variable. Class, what does the Y represent? And that's something you need to do on your test is to find your variables. Cost of boxes of paper is how we're gonna shorten it. All right, and that does match up. The two was for the envelopes. The six was for the boxes of paper. You would multiply by whatever the price is, which gives you your total cost, right? So this is the system. As far as solving it, unless it tells you to solve it a certain way, I would just type it in as one to see where they intersect. Um, using X and Y, that means that whatever number comes first is your cost of boxes of envelopes. Whatever number comes second is your cost of the boxes of paper. Questions, comments, concerns? All right, tomorrow's finer test. Make sure your practice test, if you don't want to upload it, make sure it's ready tomorrow when I check it. Thank you.